that. Um, I gave myself a concussion this morning. Stop! It's like we have our first major casualty of the project. I don't know, I heard something snap back there, so I'm gonna take a look. All right, so mission failed. Got this big, big gaping hole in my garden. Tomorrow when about one to two feet of snow will come. How's it going everyone? It's Brett James here. Now, I wanna ask you a question. What is one thing that most people don't even realize or don't even think about when they're starting a new garden or planting a new garden that makes a massive difference? Do you have any ideas? All right, it's optimizing the layout and the space in the garden. And there's a special tool in permaculture that we use called zones. Let's head out to the garden and take a look. We bought this straw bale home on five acres in Southwest Colorado. It has an existing garden and infrastructure for the garden, which is really nice. One of the big things that's going on here is that they didn't fully understand the optimization of space. So we have about maybe shy of a quarter acre that's actually fenced in here in the garden. However, the way that they use the space, they've only essentially gotten uh, use out of maybe a quarter of it. The rest of it is completely wasted. There's a llama right back there. You see that by the compost bin? A llama. <laughs> What we're gonna do here is we're gonna make some small adjustments up front to this existing space that should make a massive difference when it comes to our growing season. The reality is when you go out to the garden, most of the time, you know, you need to be checking on the plants, the irrigation, the water, the chickens, those kind of things. So let me show you the project here that we're getting into today. Let me climb up on this wall. <laughs> Hope I don't fall off of this thing. It's a straw bale wall actually for a courtyard for the house. So after kind of, you know, spending a couple months here on this property uh, and getting to walk around and kind of understand the layout and the flow that existed, uh, we kind of noticed a major bottleneck, which was this garden shed right behind me here that was just occupying a real central zone, a real good garden bed space, planting space. And so what I noticed is that if I move this garden shed out of the garden here and near the chicken coop over behind us, right? I gain a ton of garden space. I get something that I'm not gonna be using all that often out of a primary zone. And then I can just simply wrap the fence around the coop in the garden shed and add a significant amount of space to the garden for new garden beds to go right in here. Some of the challenges that I got going on here are a couple of things. Um, one, <laughs> is uh, while it might seem like a beautiful day out here today, it is uh, December in Colorado. And so we have some winter weather coming and this is probably my last opportunity to take on this project. Otherwise, I'm gonna be tackling it in the springtime uh, when, the, uh, when I should be planting beds and things like that. And the big deal being is outside of this fence line, you know, it does, it's not graveled or there's no pathways. And so all of that's going to turn to muck in mud as soon as it gets wet. And it'll likely be uh, like that for the entire winter. So I need to get this garden shed moved and I need to get this whole fence moved uh, before the weather sets in here in a couple days. And additionally, one thing is I don't know the exact weight of the shed. Um, my tractor is only a 25 horsepower tractor and it itself weighs 2,500 pounds. So I have no clue if the tractor is going to even move this shed. And then lastly, I just did some measurement and here's the gate that I got to come out of. And you can see the two cemented in fence poles behind me. I want to keep those in place to reuse this whole gate, but the shed is only a few inches narrower than this gate, which means I gotta drag that thing through that gate without hopefully messing it up and making more work for myself than's necessary. All right, so here's the other thing that I discovered is that this shed is missing a good majority of, of the framing underneath it. So typically there would be uh, uh, floor joists and floor edges framing all this in, sitting on top of these skids. It means if I'm gonna drag this heavy shed from one location to the next, that there's a good chance that it's gonna torque, twist, fall apart. That basically means before I can even move this silly shed that I gotta get in here, I gotta actually frame in um, some more of a, of a floor system on this thing so that way it'll withstand the, the stress of, of being moved. All right, let's load up on some lumber. All 
All right, so I've got, I think, as much framing underneath the shed here is going to be necessary for a garden shed and to kind of keep it together. I think the next thing is I'm really curious to see, can the tractor even lift this garden shed up? That was a complete no-go, which I kind of thought. I mean, the shed weighs more than that tractor's lift capability, so I couldn't even really get it off the, uh, uh, the concrete block. So I guess on to plan B. Oh, hey, I wasn't expecting any visitors in here. Um, shoot, I guess my book's all soggy now, but that's okay. I'll continue learning permaculture online for free anyways. Now you see, if you're interested in growing your own food and living a sustainable life in alignment with nature, uh, then check out my free web class where I unlock the three secrets that'll kickstart your permaculture-based life starting today. It's free to attend, uh, and there's a link in the description below. So I hope to see you there. Oh, real quick, hey, well, can you bring me some more bath toys, please? All right, so I think I'm gonna try dragging the shed with the tractor and I'll have a lot more control than say like my truck. So I don't know, let's give it a try. See if the tractor can move or if the shed's gonna win round two, I don't know. Not gonna happen. Okay, so I barely even started this shed move and I've already ran into a couple of problems. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm just an idiot, okay? You see, there's something that I didn't realize. I was thinking my wife's birthday was on Monday over here. And it turns out I was totally wrong and it is here on uh, Saturday. So what that means is I thought I had five days to get this shed uh, fencing project wrapped up and done, uh, but it turns out I actually have three days. All right, next up is the truck. So I'm gonna get it backed up and see if uh, we can pull this shed without ripping it to pieces. Kind of thing. Like I drag a few things with me. like we have our first major, major casualty of the project, but at least it wasn't one of his favorite Tonka trucks. Oh boy, that's not going back to straight. Man. Real quick, if you're getting entertainment out of this video or finding value in this, please like and subscribe it, okay? It helps the YouTube al algorithm serve you up more content just like it. And by the way, leave me a comment below if your projects go anything like this because mine, they always seem to. <laughs> it looks like we got about maybe just another five minutes of daylight and time's a burning. I gotta get this thing straps and chains hooked around to the other side and repositioned so I can drag it back up the hill and next to the chicken coop so we can get this done before it gets dark. Beautiful night though. All right. <clears throat> yeah. 
end. Let's see what we get. Right, let's see if this thing moves forward without on the front up. No, I heard something snap back there, so I'm gonna go take a look. See if we got. Doesn't look too bad, all things considered. The next thing to figure out is how to drag it into its spot and get my truck out from behind the coop. Well, Yeah, I'm not seeing anything that's concerning. You know, just a little bit of cosmetic damage, nothing that can't be easily resolved. All right, so that was a little bit tight getting the garden shed out of this garden, but we got it out. Um, I dragged it up the hill a little bit, and so I got the garden shed positioned now next to my chicken coop. And this is kind of going to be our zone where we're going to keep supplies, compost tea. But this zone is now out of our garden. We have tons more garden space. Um, the only problem is I've lost a day because I tore out a courtyard wall for Beth's birthday. And then they said that the winter storm is moving up. It's, it's moving quicker, and we're supposed to get one to two feet of snow. So uh, the snow starts tonight, supposedly around four o'clock. And I have to get in some fence posts and run some fencing to get all this fenced in before I lose access to this area. So I've had a bit of a setback today on the project here that um, I gave myself uh, a concussion this morning and I've done it before. I, will probably, I hope I don't do it again. I've actually done it several times before, but, uh, but this morning um, I dropped this uh, T-post pounder here. I don't know, 15, 20 pounds, you know, and you, you use it to slam the T-posts um, down into the ground. So, you know, it just uses the weight of the pounder to drive, you know, these T-posts down. And uh, sometimes when you're lifting it up, it comes off of there and I, I threw it up in the air and it came back down into my head. And it took me out for a good few hours. And then anyways, got a little bit of a concussion, feeling a little bit slow. I've had a few, you know, I've had enough concussions that I know what to do and how they feel and all of that. So, uh, trying to get this thing done because as you can see above me the the weather's starting to roll in and we have a local meteorologist and his subject line for his email to go was holy crap so I, I don't have much time uh, and then I just got to pull down old fencing combine with my new fencing and wrap it here around the new garden zone uh, see I'm dumb right now from the knock on the head. My hope is that I can uh, keep working to get this, this project done, uh, but at the same time not push myself so hard that I you know, do something even stupider or get hurt. I don't know, without further ado, I'm gonna get into it. Oh, and just to clarify about earlier, I gave myself a concussion when I wasn't wearing this, so. This is necessary. All right, so all my T-posts are in place. Now I'm just ready to peel back some of this old fencing. I'm able to kind of reuse a good portion of this and then splice it into um, my, uh, my new roll of fencing. Let's get this old junker down and reuse it. Let's, uh, I'm excited, let's get this, let's get this hung. So, all right, so sun's setting right now. Um, no precipitation as of yet, which is still good. We've got this section, this run of the fence, uh, tensioned and in place and tied into the T-post. And all I have to do is another couple hundred feet before it gets dark and the rain comes. So, let me show you how I'm uh, tensioning up this fence. 
So what I do is I roll out the fencing and then I flip it up against the uh, post poles and the T posts. And then I use a tensioner like this, which just, you can see here, it grips onto the fencing itself. And then I use uh, my tractor to just slowly and carefully pull tension into the fence. And then the tractor holds the tension onto the fence and I can go in here and, and fasten the fence to the T posts. And when I let go of the tension on the tractor, the fence is tensioned. All right, so mission failed for today, I guess. The uh, fence is probably only half done. I don't know, I got this big, big gaping hole in my garden right now, which not a huge deal. You know, not, not like there's much going on in the garden that the deer are gonna come in and damage anyways. I guess the big question being, is this hole gonna be here for the next several months? And this fence unfinished because tonight it rains and snows and then this clay turns to mud and then I can't really do much for quite some time. So I don't know, I guess we'll just see uh, what, what the morning holds. So last night, it, I guess I lucked out. It, it rained a little bit and then it snowed just a tiny bit and left uh, just a little bit of a dusting here. It means I still have a little bit more time to finish this project, basically <clears throat> till tomorrow when about one to two feet of snow will come. So I got my garden shed moved over to my chicken coop. I have my fencing all set up around the, uh, the new perimeter back there. And what that means for me is I got this job done before the snow came and that makes me really excited. The next big challenge, or well, the result is now I have all of this area below me here opened up and I can grow food there. Uh, the next step is gonna be building soil, uh, removing all of that landscaping that's all down there, and then uh, building soil so we can have in-ground beds. And then, at that point, we've optimized our space here. Uh, we've got a lot of the growing space that needs to be tended to on a daily basis. You know, real close up here to the house, and then things that we didn't need on a daily basis pushed further back. We have a more efficient garden with a better layout that's gonna help us, you know, save time and energy, which after this uh, project, I tell you, I need a break. So saving energy is always a good thing. 